A lot of people sit here in this chair and they tell me that they're worried that they're going to be the most hated person ever on VinWiki, or they get a few comments and they'll send me messages to the same. But a few months ago, we learned that almost all of them are wrong because a guy sat right here with his goofy glasses and his green hair and he was so proud of himself for having been part of a team that turned a $200,000 Lamborghini Huracan into $2 million worth of NFTs on the internet and you guys hated it. Uh, in general, I'll say that the like ratios, even though YouTube no longer makes them publicly viewable, on our videos are 98 to 99%. Generally, we try to put out content that you'll all like. That one was the worst by far. Only 35% of you liked the video, and I'm sure those 35% were just being nice to me, because I will say that if you ever really don't like a video, I hope that you'll still like it anyway, because in many cases, that is what the YouTube algorithms use to show it to the rest of the audience. But regardless, I understood that you didn't like it, and to be honest, I didn't like it either. I like Lamborghinis a whole lot more than NFTs, and the whole world has voted that way, economically since then. We've seen the collapse of the crypto market, certainly the collapse of the NFT space, but to be honest, I thought that it was just fascinating to hear what they had done, what they'd gotten away with, how many people had paid them money for it, and what it really required in order for them to do that project. Now, in addition to describing the project, which is what was in the first video that we showed, he sat here and also told us about how hard it was to blow up a Lamborghini. And the fact that it's a whole lot harder than James Bond movies make it seem, I thought was particularly fascinating. So I've decided that we would run that story, even though it's been on the shelf for a long, long time now, because the visuals are incredible. I can't believe they pulled it off. And it is actually really hard to blow a car up into 1,000 pieces. So here is the story. Please like it, even if you don't. But as always, thank you for watching VinWiki. The car project took place from December of 2021 through March of 2022. We blew up a Lamborghini to turn it into NFTs, specifically with the vision of criticizing those in crypto and Web3 who are just looking to make a quick buck and be able to afford a Lamborghini as fast as possible. Really the meat of that project isn't building the artistic vision, it's actually making it reality. Blowing up a car, may seem like an easy thing. You might think, take some explosives, you know, chuck them under, set them off, and you're off to the races. But for us, we knew, you know, we wanted roughly a thousand pieces. We wanted somewhat standard size of piece. Like, we knew that there would be things like the chunk of the frame all the way down to, you know, something as small as the start-stop button that was piece 888, the last one in the auction. If you just throw a bunch of explosives under a car and set them off, great, you've disintegrated the entire body. You're left with an entire frame and drivetrain just sitting there as huge hunks of metal. Everything on the interior has completely burned away and you've done a very unartistic destruction. We knew from the beginning that we would have to have a lot of conversations with the explosives team, with the engineer who was helping out, with our videographers to figure out exactly what the ideal output was and how we made it a possibility. So our explosives expert here had come to us in, after the project and said that this was the scariest thing he'd ever worked on because he knows he only gets one shot and if it goes wrong, there's no backup Lamborghini for us to work with. We had the Corvette test car that we blew up first as the closest cheap analog to a Huracan that we could get. Obviously a different drivetrain layout, but, and has a lot of fiberglass in the body versus the aluminum that the Huracan primarily has, but overall not too dissimilar in terms of general construction, surprisingly enough. So we did a test explosion with the whole Corvette, tested out some of our videography of the explosion itself, um, we also blew up a engine and transmission separately to test, you know, what we could do with those things independent from the car itself, because we knew that if we tried to detonate the engine to 
the amount that we wanted, it would just disintegrate a whole lot of the rest of the car. So the test explosions went super well. We went through and revised our plans for the Lamborghini knowing differences in its construction that was there and what we had learned from those test explosions. When it comes to the safety of this, there is no safe way. You can make it safer, but anything involving explosives is never to the point where it's like, oh, I don't have to care, it's safe, right? So our explosives guy, obviously very, very, very highly trained in how to make things as safe as possible, but we were a very good distance away from the car. Lots of safety equipment, like everyone had like hard hats, eye protection, ear protection, and we put a lot of thought into the layout of the explosives so that we were least likely to project anything towards where the whole crew was. There were actually charges there whose sole purpose was to push things away from the crew. At one point when we were doing the Corvette engine test explosion, we split one of the cylinder heads in half and both chunks went a solid hundred yards. Seeing a chunk of aluminum flying that far is terrifying. Thankfully, flew in a direction completely away from people, but it was one of those moments where we went, there's more safety steps to put in place for the explosion of the Lamborghini. The artistic output of this wasn't the explosion itself, it was the pieces. But in many ways to the artist behind this project, the process of making art is in some ways art in itself. There was this massive amount of effort that went into making that explosion happen and so much coordination that in some ways it's similar to how, you know, we talk about things as a well-oiled machine and view that as a type of beauty. The execution of this project itself was quite similar to that. So it was very important for us to capture the explosion itself um, and also obviously saying we blew up a Lamborghini and just seeing a bunch of pieces and never seeing an explosion is definitely less eye-catching and less convincing than we blew up a Lamborghini seeing the explosion and seeing the output of that. It's, we even had some people who won pieces in the auction go through, look back at the explosion video and point out, oh, this is where my piece was in the explosion. Like they can see it flying. We had a lot of effort put into actually capturing it. We had two phantom high-speed cameras. We had two drones flying through the fireball of the explosion itself. We had a handful of other cameras set up in protective enclosures very close to the car. And that was something that was incredible to coordinate so precisely because the drones, you have to time it perfectly for them to get through the fireball at the right time. You know, in the video, you can see pieces flying that they look, it looks like they're about to hit the drone itself. Just timing that that well was super hard. For the Phantom cameras, they have eight seconds that they can actually film because of how fast they're shooting frames and making sure that everyone knew exactly what time in the countdown they had to go through and start rolling or start flying towards the car took a good bit of practice and came out absolutely superb in the end. And for the Phantom cameras, we also had to build a protective enclosure around them. You know, the Lamborghini is an expensive car. These cameras are the same price as the Lamborghini itself, essentially. And that's before you get all the kit around them. So if we had damaged these cameras, you know, say it was just something happened and, you know, we broke a lens, that could have been $50,000. We killed a camera body, that's a quarter million. So the protection that we had to build for those was intense. And, you know, it was also at a distance further away than, you know, quite a bit of the crew for it. Like, it was intense. And getting insurance for those cameras was probably one of the trickiest problems that we had to solve for the project. I think my biggest takeaway from blowing up a Lamborghini is, you know, for me personally, it has changed my attitude towards cars in a way that I've started seeing them more as, you know, vehicles. They're meant to be driven, they're meant to be used. And at the same time, I have a much higher level of respect for what goes into them because I've gotten to see all of the intricate details of 
what makes a Lamborghini a Lamborghini. This, this is the kind of project that most people go, they, when they hear about it, they say, that's crazy, that's ridiculous, why would you do that? How would you do that? You know, that's impossible. Saying that we went from, why don't we blow up a Lamborghini to a $2 million auction in under 100 days is absolutely insane. But when you get a bunch of smart people together in a room, they can make things like that happen. When you get a ticket, no matter where it happens, it's more important than ever to fight every one. And the perfect partner in that fight is the Ticket Clinic. When you get a ticket, you're facing costly insurance, premium increases, points on your license, fines, risk of suspension, jail time, and they can help you avoid all of that. They've got offices in Florida and in California, but they can help you fight a ticket through their network of attorneys no matter where in the United States you get one. You can text a picture of your ticket to 305305, or you can check them out now at the link in the description below. So thank them for their support of Venwiki, of Car Trek, and fight your ticket with the Ticket Clinic.